Okay there, I have actually forgotten something. Um, of course, I usually do. So as a final addendum, um, I'm just here to show you an additional thing. So let's go to our test surface, get rid of our principled, and we're going to make a simple glass. So we will add a both of the GGXs. We will add a Fresnel, which is we will do a standard 1.5. So we'll get a dielectric, plug that into the BRDF, get a layer material, Oops, no, that wants to be, yes, that wants to be on the bottom, that wants to be on the top, and we have a standard beautiful glass. Now there is a problem. So we have both roughnesses. Let's make it just a bit lower just so it resolves. This is again something that you can't do if you wanted to do before. I could have a very low BRDF and a very high roughness internal. Couldn't do that before. But in this case, I'm going to lower that back down to 10. Now, what if I want to tint it? Now, of course, what you have got is a color. So let's say I want to make that a nice, strong, just slightly, not 100%, I'll do, do like that. That is a solid color, which of course isn't physically based. It's just a, sand, a standard solid color, useful very very useful for certain things if you want to do architectural glass as I said previously um, you might want to do that however if you want to do an absorption there isn't actually a tool well what we have here is the thing I forgot to mention volumetric components there are two this one is transmittance this works exactly the same as the transmittance in the standard materials, so in um, where is it? materials, you have principled and dielectric, both use this. And here we go, a lovely iron green glass. This is actually the default, it's rather attractive. I can decrease the transmittance distance. and we get a rather lovely solid color. Now you might be wondering why is this a volumetric? Well, it's actually powered by the volumetric engine. If I go to the render settings and untick volumetrics, it no longer functions. And this actually is a, a funny little limitation which some people have noticed as well in the for all the other materials that also use this. So it's worth noting, in case you are trying to be super optimal and removing all of these settings to help speed up your render, remember if you've got glass you must have that, otherwise this doesn't work. The other one is the volumetric scattering. Very powerful, quite difficult to control, but this is effectively a true volumetric so I could, uh, let's say, let's scatter the red some. So I'll put that at 10, uh, make that 8 and that 1. And we get kind of a, a green scatter effect. It's very noisy because we actually haven't got enough volumetric samples. So I will go into our light. Oh, actually it does have enough. Perhaps I will increase the volumetric. And I'll put that back down. 
perhaps make it five. Increase the absorption, which remember if you've done any um, any volumetric stuff, absorption works in reverse. So if I increase that to say one, it starts making the look green because it's absorbing all of the red light but not absorbing the green. I think just to keep on increasing that. And then we have a, a weird looking. Now this is obviously a very difficult to control. Um, the same is available in Sigma 2. As the same settings, it's just it's on its own. You can also, as a quick one, just to show you, change the scale. If you want to quickly change all of these values simultaneously, so I could make that at 10 meters, or make it almost glass-like, make it say 2 meters for a slightly misty absorption. As I am increasing that scale, or decreasing the scale, the, the scattering, as you can see, it's a rather lovely effect. You've got a, a sort of a misty scattering going on. And I can just keep lowering that. That's a rather attractive effect. It's, again, it, it reaps a lot of rewards, this shader, but it's unfortunately um, a little bit tricky to understand and control. And there we go, we're getting an almost opaque effect. And if I flip around to the back, and there's the sun and look at this from behind that's rather lovely we're getting the blue absorption effect but it's sort of volumetric in the center so it's slightly transparent slightly scattering it's tricky but it's as you can see it's uh, worth playing with this particular material just to get a rather beautiful mixture between transparent and absorptive and volumetric effects all combined in one single shader. Okay, hopefully that uh, gives you some ideas about things that you can add and uh, take away from this. All right, thanks very much, guys. That's the final addendum for this particular bit on material components. Cheers, thank you.